senior get a birdie? Should he get a bogey? He's got a stake this. Remember, he's two behind Chalmers, who's in the trap. <laughs> you never want to give Peter Senior an opening. He's walked through too many of them in his life. Yeah, he's got a, a fetish for grabbing it with <laughs> both hands, Bruce. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Even when nobody's offering it to him. Brett Ogle's down having a close look at this. Uh, what's Nick got? Brett, what can he do here? Well, he's got a pretty straightforward uh, straightforward shot here. It wasn't a very good wedge that he played. Uh, he was in the trouble, in trouble off the tee in a bunker, but his ball's lying fairly clean. Very good short game. I expect this to be very close, if not in the hole from here. He's only just got to pop this on the fringe and, and let it uh, run up to the flag. Sounds easy, doesn't it? <laughs> you, you make it sound very easy. Yeah, out of this rough, anything's possible, though. But this guy is very good, though. You don't win six major championships without a short game like this bloke. Well, uh, pretty ordinary. Got it to about a metre and a half. He wouldn't be too happy with that. Well, Jack, oh. you said that uh, yeah. what sort of liar have you got? And lion stance pretty horrid. I hope he doesn't rush this, Bruce. He, he looks like he's going about this a bit hastily. Still is gay, I would think, probably. It doesn't look like par to me. That so, lady has just put down the glass, by the way. She's only sipping. She's only gargling. She's not full-on drinking yet. More than 28,000 fans here at Royal Adelaide today. Fantastic turnout. Just don't forget uh, this fella, Sandy. Uh, this is an eagle chip he's got here. Very magical, Jack. He's only got to pop it on the green. Feed all the way to the pin downwind. Makes this will be a loud, loud roar. Hasn't got the pace to make it to the hole, but a beautiful shot anyway. Certain birdie. So the way things are shaping up, Stuart Appleby gets that in. He's got to make three at the last to tie Greg Chalmers if he takes five. Correct. And Peter Senior, who's on the same hole, can tie if he makes his. I love it when you get pumped. <laughs> Be interesting to see who's to putt first. There's not a lot in it. I felt that probably Greg Chalmers still to go, but angles, camera angles can be deceptive and runs into a sort of the old match play scenario here. And amazing. It's amazing, isn't it? How you can have a finish like this at one stage. This man was cruising along, leading by four, saying, my hat, this is a lovely day out here at Royal Adelaide. And suddenly everything's changed. Tell you what, he can, <coughs> he, he can shut the door with this button. He can. He can. He's got this for par on 18. And that's the best way to do it. You control your own destiny yeah. that way. Don't rely on others. little coming back to hole just getting a fraction smaller <laughs> and you could look it's a magnificent crowd around the, the 72nd but you could almost hear a pin drop when he was putting them i think where we're fidgeting about we're I getting know, nervous <laughs> <laughs> and look the old wily veteran peter senior knows the situation don't be surprised if he pops that in. Faldo. Well, he makes it, but it's only for a five. It's really been a curate's egg of a day. Now, Peter Senior. This putt to possibly tie, maybe win. Birdie putt to get him back to level par. Chalmers still to play. Should move a little bit from his left to right. Uh, started on the wrong side. Had to be inside left lip. Well, 
although there's still Stuart Appleby to come, that does make uh, life a little bit easier for Chalmers. If he'd mocked that one in, that would have made his little one very difficult. He's on the comeback trail of Peter Senior. He opened the proceedings this year with a round of 70 and he has finished with a round of 70 to finish one over for the championship. Appleby picks up his shot. And he's still in there. So he's level par for the day. And if Greg Chalmers holds, then Appleby will have to make a three at this hole to force a tie, force a playoff. You're right, this has got a little bit longer. It's not kicking, Bruce, that's no. for sure. It's one that'll get your attention under these circumstances. Your old palm's a little clammy. The secret is to take the pressure out, don't choke the club. Pick your line and knock it in the back. Yeah. Well done. Well, it'll look good in the photos, provided he does win. But he has played extremely well today. A round of 70 for Greg Chalmers. Probably doesn't know that Stuart Appleby's birded the last. I think he might uh, think he's won. And, I mean, he is now heavily odds on to win. Yes, but it's not over yet. Cap's gone, gloves gone, ball's gone. Might need all three of them in a minute. <laughs> Formalities to be completed in the scorer's hut. And in the meantime, back on the tee is Stuart Appleby. Needing a three. Got to get it on the fairway, Sandy, that's the key. Doesn't want to be playing this from the rough. Woo. Yeah, that's perfect. So, it's going to come down maybe to the last putt to decide who is going to be the champion. Is it going to be Greg Chalmers or is it going to be Stuart Appleby? We'll find out after this break. Golden Australian Open for 1998, Nick Faldo playing the last 158 metres to the pin. He can't win, he's at plus three. But he can certainly finish with a three. Yeah, it's been a strange day for Faldo, every time he's, he's hit a good shot or hold a good putt he's then frittered it away over the next hole or two and it's uh, well it's sort of game of snakes and ladders for him today now Stuart Appleby changing his club Brett yeah here we go Jack we're coming down here Stuart was having a chat to me and he said just two more he knows exactly what to do and I said hey don't worry about the two more let's go Robert Gemmez Nestle Invitational just hold it and beat <laughs> you know make two and let's get out of here he knows what he's got to do though he's got 147 and with that flag today Front, front quarter of this green, very makeable. And if ever he needs one good golf shot and one good putt, it's right now. He's played, he's played good today. He's played really good. He's had a lot of chances with the putts. Here he goes. Seven iron. Straight at it. Oh, boy, is this a good-looking golf shot. Be the club. Yeah. How about that one? He certainly make his three. Now, without wishing to look too far ahead, should there be a playoff, it will be on holes 18 and 17 until we have a result. But look at that wonderful sight. Royal Adelaide has been transformed this week. And you just wonder what uh, dear old Stewart's thinking as he uh, makes his way down the 72nd hole. It's been a wretched year. Horrendous time, and he's come through it uh, with absolute flying colours. Just can't help but admire the man so much. Just caddy Joe Damiani in front of him. Been with him since his win in the Honda Classic last year.
An emotional sight, Jack. Sure is. And Greg Chalmers now looking a little more concerned than he was two or three minutes ago. Well, he knows enough about the game, Sandy, to know that you can never take anything for granted. And until Stuart Appleby's uh, struck this putt, he won't know if he's the Australian Open champion yet. And just, um, I suppose, if, like Brett said, he hasn't played badly today, Stuart Appleby, at all. He just hasn't been able to work a putt in the hole. And if, uh, if the, the example my dear old dad used to use of the percentages are actually in out, out bit uh, Appleby's favour to make a putt, surely. But to make a putt to tie in an Australian Open or any big championship is a tall order. <laughs> Just got to sit and wait, Greg. Keep an eye on it. Thought he was going to nod in agreement with you. <laughs> Could probably hear it. They've certainly got a television yeah. in the scorer's hut. And a good place to stay. You stay away from the crowds. It's the only place around this club where there's a bit of peace and quiet, guaranteed. No one can get in there with you. Look at him bearing down on this. He's going to pick the line, trust it, and then put a good stroke on it. Stuart Appleby with this birdie putt and a break from his left to right to tie. He just fails and Greg Chalmers is the Holden Australian Open champion for 1998. But listen to the applause for Stuart Appleby. A round of 72 today. Well done. No, it's all right. Thank you. Hey. There we are. That was uh, Greg Chalmers riding that part. He's seen it miss, and suddenly he realizes he is the champion. So just one player left. Maybe just one shot left, and how often has Alder had moments like this when a championship or a big event has depended on him? This afternoon he's been a bit player, a cameo role. But he has, I think, thoroughly enjoyed the course, the atmosphere, and a much, much better week than he's had at any time over perhaps the past couple of years this to run outright fourth Chalmers senior Appleby Allenby and Faldo on the same score at three over so if Faldo gets this in he'll jump above Robert Allenby right to left putt for three gee how did that miss Seventy-seven on the first day, then he met Norman America next year. We wish him well. The Australian champion for 98, Greg Chalmers. Have you played for one very excited man with me? Congratulations. Thanks, Pat. Thanks very much. I'm just uh, just thrilled. Have you ridden a roller coaster of emotions like you did over the last 15 minutes? Ever? No, I try not to. I try and avoid that sort of stuff. Um, it's just amazing. I've gone from uh, four in front with, uh, with three or four to go, and all of a sudden it looked like Peter Senior might tie, and then, um, you know, and uh, maybe Stuart Appleby had a great chance down the last hole. And uh, I don't know whether I should be excited and happy on you know, my wine or haven't. I, I just don't know. But it's, uh, it's done now. I'm very happy. Just a fantastic start when you punched the air with that last putt went in. It was, uh, it was a little tricky putt as well. And then you had to wait for Stuart to finish. Well, I, I, at that time, I didn't know if Stuart had birdied 17. And, uh, and, and I actually hold it. I thought, that's it. I've won. And I won the Australian Open. And then I thought, 
and I got him and Peter said, oh, no, Stewie's just birdied 17, and I, oh, he can beat the last of play. So I had to get my brain back around, and, you know, there's a chance like, it's not over yet, so um, you just go up and down, and uh, oh, it's just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I've spoken to you like, the last couple of days, and you came in here just so relaxed, like there was such a weight off your shoulders when you weren't that card to go to the US. Yeah, you're right. I, it's, it's almost as if uh, I went out there and uh, I was so nervous, and, and uh, I, I shot two under the last day in, that, in the last round of that, and I was so nervous, and I thought, well, hell, if I can be that nervous and shoot two under, I must be learning something. And uh, and I went there today, and I uh, honestly, I was, I was trying to mark my card on the first time. I nearly culled the whole square in. I was just like, um, you know, but uh, I handled it okay, and uh, I'm just thrilled. Now, I know there's someone special to you watching in Sydney. She couldn't be here, but you'll be home tonight with the Stonehaven Trophy. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. It's my girlfriend, Nicole Miller. So uh, I haven't seen her in, uh, well, I've been away for six or eight weeks now. So it'll be nice to see. I've got a whole bunch of family at home too. My mum and dad and my sister. And my coach, Ross Miller, will be thrilled as well. So it's great. What a way to come home. We just said you've been everywhere. As you said, Morocco, you've been right through Europe. You've been to the States where you've earned your card. And now you come home and you win your country's open. Oh, mate, really, I mean, ever since you watched telly, and when I was 13 years old, you watched it, when I first started playing, you watch this event, and you see the guys that win it, and, you know, you talk about player, and Norman, and, and, and Graham, and, and the list, the list just goes on, and, uh, I don't know, you know, sometimes you wonder if I'm worthy to throw my name in there, but, uh, it's there, and I'm, I just can't believe it. Around this golf course, you're a very, very worthy champion, I know there's 26,000 fans out there ready to acknowledge the new Australian Open champion going and savour the moment. Thanks, Pat, thanks very much. 25 years of age, and he has his name on the Australian Open trophy. We'll see. 28,150 of you came here today, and you've been absolutely fantastic. Don't only give yourselves a pat on the back, give the players and give our winner, Greg Chalmers, a pat on the back. It's been a wonderful day for Australian golf. Holden again have been wonderful supporters and sponsors of our great game and I'm going to call upon Jim Weemels who's the chairman and managing director to come forward to say a few words and then make the presentation but please put your hands together for Jim. He's won our Australian Open. As far as I'm aware he's the first sand groper or Western Australian to win this event and whether or not he's the first left-hander I don't know. I lastly want to thank our friends in the media, the press for the tremendous support they've given this event this week. They've been fantastic. It's been a great success from the Australian Golf Union's point of view and hopefully IMG, the AGU, Holden and Channel 7 will see fit to come back to South Australia in the near future to once again play on this magnificent golf course. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. I'm pretty sure Western Australia would love to claim Greg as a West Australian, but I do believe he comes from New South Wales, and I think he's the first left-hander to win since Claude Feltstead in 1909. Unfortunately, we missed that, but he did win. Our champion, ladies and gentlemen, has had rounds of 71, 73, 74, and 70. Would you please salute the 1998 champion, Greg Chalmers? And I'll ask Jim Weemers to come forward, and Jim, if you'd present the cheque, the Stonehaven Cup goes to Greg Chalmers. Come over. I don't know whether you'd like to put that down for a moment or just maybe you're gripping it too tightly, Greg, but I'm sure everyone here has been a marvellous following uh, the entire week and to have many of the 28,000 still here, I know they'd love to hear a few words from you. Congratulations, especially today. I mean, it was just a superb day's golf. Thanks, Andy. Thanks very much. It's, uh, uh, it's just a, a wonderful feeling, and uh, ever since I've, I've started playing golf, I uh, honestly don't know what to say, but uh, I, I've just uh, had a fantastic day, and uh, can I make a speech now? Uh, we've got about uh, 20 minutes. I, I want to ask you a couple of questions, then you can. Uh, your girlfriend, Nicole Miller, g gave you boxer shorts, and you'd like to wear those on the final round. I'm not asking for a display, but do you, are you wearing those today, and is... Has that helped? I kind of... I made the mistake of mentioning that to one of the press guys. <laughs> the shock of the yeah. press. Um, yes, I am, and uh, I need all the help I can get, so... Well, look, I know it's a very emotional time for you. You're heading off to America next year. This is going to be a fantastic boost for you. Sure, if you'd like to say a few words, the microphone's yours. Thanks very much.
um, the Honourable Premier, um, Dr David Cherry, the uh, President of AGU, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, firstly, I'd just like to thank Royal Ad Golf Club. Uh, it's just a, a fantastic thrill to come here and play um, and to turn out the course just beautifully. Um, many thanks to Holden for their continued support of, of golf in Australia and the Australian Open. Um, thanks to uh, everyone who uh, put, put such an effort into this tournament. Um, everyone who helped, it's just been fantastic. It'd be uh, remiss of me if I didn't mention uh, a couple of guys over there, uh, uh, to Stuart. Um, I got I gotta be honest, I, I felt a bit like a villain today because I know how badly everyone wanted Stuart to win. And uh, I think, I think uh, the, the whole country's behind you, Stewie. Um, Yeah. And uh, thanks to uh, Peter as well for his company over the last couple of days. He's, he's such a tough competitor and uh, I can still remember sitting back and watching him on telly win tournaments and uh, to play alongside him and, uh, and have him. It's, it's, it wasn't that long ago, but um, it's true. And, uh, and, and he had, you know, 20 feet to tie me. It's, uh, it's stuff that, uh, you know, that uh, stories are made of and I was, and I was thrilled to... Uh, to go head to head against these sort of players. Um, and uh, I just, uh, I want to thank everyone who came out and, uh, and supported this, this tournament. And uh, it's been such a special day for me and such a special week. And uh, I, I really look forward to, uh, to, to playing this tournament for many years to come. Thanks very much. Our champion, Greg Chalmers for 1998. And I know you want to hear and meet the, the two guys that he held off. There goes the winner's check. That he held off. The man he used to watch. He's quick to pick up that winner's check and uh, taking that to America. The man he used to watch on the black and white TV, the old bloke in the cannon hat. Put your hands here. He's a fierce competitor and he's going to limp forward now. Peter Senior. Wonderful competitor. Well done, Pete. I'd like to get you both up. And a man who went oh so close, started the day with a one-shot lead, but it's been a fantastic week, Stuart Appleby. <laughs> so, I really do this, and I know how you like a chat, but I reckon everyone here today would probably just like to hear you two, maybe each having a chat about your respective rounds and your week here at Royal Adelaide. So, Pete, far away. Um... Well, the main uh, thing that I was happy with that the fan broke this morning and we didn't get as much wind as we've got the last few days. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of taking next week off to get over the bruises and the blood that I've lost this week. But uh, the course has been fantastic. The organisation has been fantastic. Uh, the telecast, Channel 7 does it like no one else. IMG, the AGU. It's a credit to everybody who put in for this week and uh, we would dearly love to come back here. First of all, I'd um, obviously traditionally like to thank the sponsors, Holden. You um, have been uh, soaked with red shirts, everyone, this week. I'd like to thank the ladies here on the right, um, all the marshals through the week, the courtesy car drivers. Um, the whole motion of this thing has been promoted very well, um, and Holden's been a great sponsor. I'd like to thank the Bridgetown boys up there, too, for being uh, pretty, pretty noisy all week. But um, really, I... I um, I'm happy to play well. I'm... I'm very pleased that I did that. I'm very, very happy for Greg. Um, I know what he's feeling. I know, um, I know what it's like to win and uh, to win an Australian Open. I don't, but I know the feeling of winning is very, very strong, very fine. And we're going to see him in the States next year. We should be very proud of him. He's a, I mean, I'm young, but he's younger than me, so he's a young bloke. And we call him Rookie on the tour because um, he just does so well out of the blocks. So I thank everyone for coming. I look forward to coming back next year and um, being the first one to speak. Thank you. Stuart Appleby and Peter Senior. Thank them both very much. Well done, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, there was also a tremendous struggle this year in the amateur ranks uh, with the championship medal and the Waterford Crystal Trophy going to the winner. And that winner comes from Western Australia. Kim Feldon shot rounds of 78, 74, 72 and 73 to finish nine over for the championship. Please put your hands together for a star of the future, Kim Felton.
Uh, I just have a couple of quick things to say. First of all, to Greg, uh, well done. He deserves every bit of success he's had over the last couple of years or when he's turned pro, well done. To Stuart and Peter, well done. I was actually watching it on the big screen and it was probably easier for me being over there than it was for you three guys. Uh, to Holden, the AGU, IMG and every other sponsor, uh, well done for running another great tournament. To all the marshals and everybody that's helped out this week, they've raked a fair few of my bunkers, so uh, well done to them and everybody else for coming out. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Kim Felton. Well, what a wonderful occasion for Australian golf, the presentation ceremony at the Australian... ...for me being over there, it was for you three guys. Uh, to Holden, the AGU, IMG and every other sponsor, uh, well done for running another great tournament. To all the marshals and everybody that's helped out this week, they've raked a fair few of my bunkers, so uh, well done to them and everybody else for coming out. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Kim Felton. Well, what a wonderful occasion for Australian golf, the presentation ceremony at the Australian... Parr wins the championship. It's been a long time since we've seen that in an Australian Open. He won by one shot ahead of Stuart Appleby and Peter Senior, who were both one over. Nick Faldo and Robert Allenby, three over. Rod Pampling finished four over. But really, Jack, uh, as Bruce Critchley said, Royal Adelaide came out of it shining. And as you've said as well, you're... Your praise has been enormous for this course. Yeah, I don't think uh, that we'd want to be playing a course as tough as this every week, but uh, I certainly think for an Australian Open uh, that uh, it befits that uh, the test that it should be. Norman, Norman. Uh, yeah, not, not really uh, his week. Uh, I think perhaps not enough golf Peter under, under his belt. Uh, conditions tough here. Uh, not quite ready, I didn't think. And the more golf he plays, the better he'll get. You can't just have eight months off yeah. uh, and suddenly front up and win an Australian Open. Now he'll head to Royal Melbourne next week for the President's Cup. Obviously, uh, uh, enormous pressure on his shoulders there too, Jack. Well, he's got to play a significant role. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, we need Greg on song next week. The American team, of course, very strong. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, come next week because a couple of the American representatives here this week didn't do so well. And what about Greg Chalmers, of course? He's looking forward to a huge career in the States. Should be a terrific year next year for him. All right. Thanks, Jack. We'll be back with more from...